All right, good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a um, cardboard steering wheel or phone holder um, for playing games on your phone. So what you're gonna need for this project is you're going to need a cardboard box. You can use a cereal box easily for this. You're gonna need a pair of scissors, a pencil, some markers are always good to have on hand. Those are the things you absolutely need. And you need to have a phone for this because we're going to be tracing our phones. Um, that way it fits your individual phone. Um, and some other good things to have on hand, a ruler would be very handy to have. Um, and that's about it that you absolutely would want. So we're going to start with our cardboard box here. And we've just got a regular size cereal box that we're gonna flatten and then take apart. So what I did was I already had the top of my cereal box open and then I undid the bottom of the cereal box. Now I'm finding there's a seam on the side here where it will open nicely. So we're gonna just carefully unpeel that. Oh, this one so you can see where I'm working. So we're gonna just carefully unpeel and open up this cereal box. And as I'm opening it, I'm just pressing on the seams in the opposite direction of the way they were folded so that that folds them really nice and flat. Now the two main parts that we really want for our gaming wheel are the um, large sections here. So we're gonna take our scissors and just start to cut those out first. Try to cut your lines as straight and carefully as you can so that you get matching size pieces of cardboard. And also, see I'm gonna cut a little spine section here off as well. And also you wanna cut carefully so that um, the scrap pieces that you have are still usable because as you'll see as we go, you will want to still have these pieces. So I'm gonna put that over to the side and then these flaps that kind of hang off, we're gonna cut those off as well. and put all our little scrap pieces over to the side. Using a cereal box that's folded like this will help you to get really nice straight lines. This is a very small scrap, but I'm still gonna save it just in case. And wherever there's a flap, I fold it back and forth in both directions because that helps it to lay nice and flat for when I'm cutting. There we go. So now I've got one section completely done and we'll go to the next one. Fold those flaps back and forth so they cut easily. very last one and then we can move on to the next part of our project. There we go. So we pushed all our scrap over to the side and now we've got two matching size pieces of cardboard. So we've got the plain side and we've got the printed side. So I'm going to work with just one to begin. Put the other one over to the side. 
And my cereal box is a little bit bent in the middle there. So I'm just going to lightly fold where it's bent so that it lays nice and flat again. And now is where we're gonna grab our phones and start tracing them. So you wanna put your phone right in the middle. There we go. And take your pencil and just trace very carefully around the outside of the phone. And let's see, you might be able to only just see the outline there. And we started with pencil because it's very erasable. So if I didn't like the way any of that came out, I'd be able to erase it. But I wanna be able to see it really clearly and it came out just fine. So now I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna trace over that pencil line. Now, why didn't I just trace with a marker to begin with? Because I wouldn't wanna get marker on my phone as I'm tracing around. So we traced with a pencil to begin. So that makes enough of a mark for us to see, but it doesn't mark up the phone. It can be very helpful to turn your paper as you trace. So you're always tracing in the easiest direction for your hand and then also so you're not rubbing your hand all through the marker. All right, now I've got my phone traced out and I'm going to start the cutting process. So I'm gonna come back to that pencil and I'm gonna use it to poke a hole right in the middle. There we go, takes just a moment. And then I'm going to twist the pencil back and forth to push it through. And that gives me a little hole to begin cutting with my scissors. So I place the end of the scissors in there and I'm gonna cut out an X shape. Turn the paper and keep cutting out that X. So when I say I'm cutting out an X, you can see what I mean there. Now it's a lot easier to fold those flaps back and cut around the tracing. This is where you want your cuts to be the absolute most careful because I really, really want the opening to be just the right size to fit my phone. And I'm gonna save my scraps over to the side because we may need to use them. So here we go. I've got the rectangle shape. Um, cereal box. And then I've also got a rectangle with some curved sides that should fit my phone exactly. Let's take a peek. Okay, it's a good fit. Would have liked for it to have been a little more snug, but it's a good fit. So next up, we're gonna cut out space for the handles. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna make a little dot at the top and a little dot, not all the way at the top. It's about two inches from the top and a dot about two inches from the bottom. 
You can measure that out by placing your fingers. So two to three fingers, depending on how big your hand is. I'm gonna use two fingers there, two fingers at the top to make a little dot. I'm gonna connect it using my um, ruler. Make sure it's nice and straight. So we've got a straight line, and now I'm just gonna turn that into the letter D. So we're making a capital D. As you can see. And then I'm gonna make one on the other side as well. You wanna make it about the same size. For our purposes here, it's not crucial that it be exactly the same size, but you do want it to be pretty close. So I made a straight line, and this one's not the letter D, it's a backwards D, or it's a C with a line through it. You see when I'm working on the left side, it's not as natural or simple as when I'm working on the right side. So when I'm working on the left, I start to curve the top in a little bit, then I curve the bottom in a little bit. That's how I make sure that my shape is symmetrical. So now we've got those sections. We're gonna go back in with the marker, trace back over that. So now you've got basically the shape of two orange wedges. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna use our pencil to poke an opening and then use our scissors to cut it out. So I'll just give my pencil a push and a twist. And now you can snip into it more easily. And we're going to cut out that segment. So now we've got this segment cut out and we're gonna come over to this side, use that pencil again. Make sure as you're going that you're very careful and you don't poke yourself with the pencil. I'm also not using a sharp pencil. So I'm making sure to be very careful and using just common tools that you might have around the house. So I poked the opening and now I can go back in with my scissors and cut it out more carefully. So what this is going to become is the place where I can put my hands in and steer. So now that we've got that, in order to get a good wheel shape, we really don't want a whole lot of extra around these edges here. So we're going to use one of our segment cutouts and our ruler to get a better shape here. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my ruler and I'm placing it near the top of those segments. Get it nice and straight. Hold it firmly in place though. Nice and straight. 
hold it firmly in place, and we'll draw a straight line across at the top and then at the bottom. Now your cereal boxes will probably all be slightly different sizes. Maybe you're using a regular size, maybe you're using a family size box. So there's not an exact measurement. You're gonna to have to look closely and see how much extra you wanna keep. And I'm gonna carefully cut that off. Place my scraps out of the way. And then I'm gonna carefully cut off the extra strip at the bottom. Now it's getting to be a little bit more manageable to hold, but we still have these very pointy corners and it doesn't give quite as good a steering wheel look. And as you can see, we're not making a completely circular steering wheel, but we're making something with some handholds. So now I'm gonna take my little wedge shape from before, that was part of my scrap, and I'm going to place it so that um, it lines up with the top and the side, and I'm gonna trace that slightly rounded shape and see if I like the look. So if you like the way it comes out, you can see a little bit of it there, then go back in with your marker. And trace it again. There we go. And I do like the way that came out. Merlin has come to say hello to us. Merlin, you gonna help us make a uh, gaming wheel? I'm gonna try this other wedge shape here. The side came out a little more smooth. So you're just lining it up. I'll show you the colorful side. You're lining it up so that it hits the top and the side, and you get that nice gentle arch. So we don't have such sharp edges. All right, and let's cut those edges. So now we're trimming each of the four corners so that it has a slightly more rounded shape. And then I like to be picky about my details. So I'm just going back through and cutting off any little extras. And get my scraps out of the way. So now we have the basic shape of the steering wheel, but of course you don't want just one flimsy piece of cardboard. So we're gonna go and get we're going to get our other piece of cardboard. There we go. And we're going to lay this on top, and this is going to be our tracing template. So that sits right on top. You're not going to cut out the, the center this time. That's going to have to stay because that's the backing to where your phone goes. So what we're tracing here is the outside shape. and the handles for the um, steering wheel. As you imagine, you wanna be able to put your hands through the handle. So I traced the top shape, the inside of that handle. Now I'm tracing the bottom.
and I'm tracing the inside of this handle as well. All right, we'll take our top layer off. Now you can see what we've got to cut out here. So here's our shape and we're going to start to cut. And as always, you want to be somewhat careful as you're using your scissors and stay on the line as much as possible because we're going to attach these together and you really want the outside shape especially to line up. So now I'm just double checking. Now that I've got it in line and I do see that some of my line work needs to be fixed. So I'm going back to my marker, hold it carefully in place. and I'm retracing, there. Take my pencil again, poke it right through. I'm not using a lot of pressure, I'm just using some good solid pressure. And you notice I'm not jabbing the pencil in, I'm just pushing and twisting until I can poke it through. Anytime you're cutting and anytime you're um, using an object, especially a pencil to puncture an opening, you really want to be careful and patient and steady. It's not a time to go fast. So same thing again, nice and steady, patient, careful. Not anywhere near my fingers on the other side. There we go. Little push, little twist, that's all it takes. And I'm staying on the line as I very carefully turn. Sir, please. And I like to be very careful with details. So I'm just gonna use the tip of my scissors to carefully snip. There we are. So now you've got the backing side and the opening side. We're gonna lay them together and check to see that they match up really well. No. So these ones match up really well. And our next step, our next step here is going to be to add in a little bit 
of layer in between the uh, top and bottom. So again, we're gonna measure out our phones separately because I'm sure they're all slightly different. So I'm just gonna look and see how deep do I need this to be? I need this to be probably about a quarter of an inch. So that's gonna be our part two of this video. So we're gonna stop here. We're gonna pause here, really. We're gonna pause here, and when we come back, we'll make part two. All right, see you in a few.